In this video, I'm going to make a few comments about uh, the legalization of same-sex marriage around the world, and specifically the lack of it in Australia. I'm Australian, but I haven't lived in Australia for about 10 years. I live in the United States. And, you know, over the years of living outside of Australia, I've seen country after country legalize same-sex marriage. Um, in the majority of states in the USA, same-sex marriage is now legal. It's legal in many countries in Europe, including England, and recently in Ireland it was legalized. It's legal in New Zealand, Canada, in, in many countries around the world. But for various reasons, mostly political, um, same-sex marriage is still not legal in Australia, despite the fact that over 70% of Australians support this. They have no issue with it, and they would not oppose it at all. Yeah, basically because of a conservative government and the opposition of the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, this, the legalization of same-sex marriage has basically been blocked. Um, now, things are progressing and, you know, it's obvious, as with many of these things, um, it's obvious that sooner or later, in one day, same-sex marriage will be legalized in Australia and that's a good thing. But given that is likely to happen, you know, th there are a few people coming out of the woodworks to uh, express their opposition as happens w when uh, the progress is being made. And there's one particular couple, uh, Nick and Sarah Jensen. They're Christian. They refer to themselves as Christians. Um, they've been married for over 10 years. And they've basically come out saying that if same-sex marriage is legalized in Australia, they will get divorced. Now, <laughs> I'm going to read you a quote from Nick Jensen, he basically says um, that, you know, if same-sex marriage is legalized, you know, our most, it would undermine our most sacred institution and have serious consequences for children who would grow up without a mother or a father. He continues to say, once you, that you say that marriage is detached from children, that it's just about love, then when three people come to the state and say, well, we're all in love, then the state has no grounds except unjust discrimination to say why they can't get married. When it becomes detached to the child's right to a mother and a father and the sacred institution that it is, then suddenly it becomes meaningless and those boundaries can't be put back in place. Well, there, you know, there are so many things wrong with this quote, it's difficult to know where to start. But firstly, is the point that marriage is a legal institution. It has absolutely nothing to do with religion. And if, you know, if couples wish to get married in a church or they want to have some type of religious ceremony, that's perfectly their business and within their right, but it has no bearing on the legal validity of the marriage. In, in all Western countries, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, wherever, various countries in Europe, United States, it's a legal institution, marriage. Without a legal document, without a marriage license, the marriage has no validity. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got married in a church. You have to have the uh, you know the authorization of the state in order for that marriage to be legal so you know this this idea that it's a sacred religious religious institution is out the door that's point number one point number two marriage isn't just about procreation if for many couples including straight couples it has nothing to do with procreation it's it's any two people, man or woman, man, man, woman, woman, that wish to enter into a legal union. There's no requirement to evidence that you love each other or that you plan to produce children or not, anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. So people who oppose legalization of same-sex marriage and continue to peddle this idea that marriage is about procreation are blatantly lying because that is not the case. Now... They're also saying that, you know, children should not be denied the right to a mother and a father. No one's denying anyone the right to a mother and a father. All children will always have a mother and a father, regardless of whether a couple is straight, gay, whatever. What the, the point is, is that there is no evidence to suggest that children that grow up in same-sex households do any worse than children that grow up in opposite-sex households. No evidence whatsoever. The outcomes are even across the board. But opponents of same-sex marriage and Sarah and Nick Jensen, uh, no exception, continue to peddle this lie that somehow children will be uh, badly done by. This is not the case. It's also quite insulting to those straight couples who have chosen not to have children or who cannot have children to say that marriage is about procreation and that if you know ch children are not produced the marriage is meaningless like how insulting is that to couples who have been married for many years spent decades of their life together but for whatever reason have decided not to have children 
or cannot have children. Their marriages are meaningless, ridiculous. Now, the last point that I wanted to make is this idea about the slippery slope and that, you know, if same-sex marriage is legalized, it will open the door to polygamy and marriage with between people and animals and all this kind of ridiculous stuff. This has not happened in any country in the world. Pairing one thing with another is completely illogical and makes no sense. In no country where same-sex marriage has been legalized has it opened the door to polygamy or legalized marriage between multiple people. So once again, you know how you have opponents of same-sex marriage peddling lies, hysteria, you know, false ideas just to promote opposition. The reality is same-sex marriage will become legal in Australia one day. And if Nick and Sarah Jensen wish to divorce, let them go ahead and do it and let everyone else get married. Bye.